Okay, guys. Test number three. Test number three. You're talking about the revolution. Revolution. Okay. So now, what are the key things? Remember the, the theme about chapter four and what happened. So go back and watch that video if you haven't. Your introductory video. Write down that theme. Going to need to know it. So what happened during the Revolutionary War? Well, you got some vocab words. You have it looks like three of them right here: taxes, Declaration of Independence, and differing viewpoints. Um, Taxes. The king threw a lot of them upon the British subjects. Uh, money collected by the government to pay for things. At this point in time, it was paying for that war, right? Uh, Declaration of Independence, formally uh, signed, written by Thomas Jefferson, uh, pretty much told Britain that we were going to be independent. But were we really independent at that time? No. A paper doesn't declare our independence. We had to fight a war to win our independence. And differing viewpoints, you have patriots who were colonists, British subjects, who were fighting for independence and loyalists who were, you know, still supporters of the crown. Now, I'm not going to go through each one of these acts and taxes on your note sheet. I'm looking at it right here. But know the causes of the revolution. Know the background. I might just touch on it, right? Proclamation of 1763, that's that whole moving west of the Appalachians. Sugar Act, right? Taxes. These acts are taxes. Stamp Act. Remember the Stamp Act on all the paper goods? Uh, the Townsend Acts, when you're talking about, uh, you know, uh, glass and lead and that stuff. And then in response to the Townsend Acts, you know, you have people in Massachusetts fighting. You have the Boston Massacre. Remember about the Boston Massacre, those nine uh, British soldiers against a group of uh, Massachusetts um, subjects, you know, British subjects in Massachusetts. It's during, uh, it's during March. They're throwing snowballs and they're throwing, you know, clam shells and sticks and whatever they can find throwing them at these guys one hits them uh they start firing into this crowd of people it's like a riot the boston massacre five killed including crispus addicts the first uh he was a uh, he was a mixed apprentice uh and uh he was the first casualty of the revolution uh then you have the tea act where the king you know puts all the the east india company reduces it british people have to drink bad tea they don't want to drink bad tea in america so uh, the sons of liberty dress up as native throw it into the harbor and then um that's the Boston Tea Party, and then the king gets really mad that you threw this tea away without paying for it. So then he passes the Intolerable Acts, and that has to do with closing the Boston Harbor and revoking their charter and putting some a British guy in charge. It was just, it was just really crappy. So, acts, acts, taxes, taxes, taxes. That's what the king King George did to Americans uh, or British subjects in the colonies. And then we had the battles. Don't forget you want to know the big battles. You want to know the first battles, uh, the shot heard around the world, Lexington and Concord. What was that about? Who was that guy riding his horse, Paul Revere? All right. Uh, you want to know um, a big, uh, the, the first victory, right? You want to know about the Battle of uh, Fort Ticonderoga and what they did with those cannons, how they took them out of there. Uh, you want to know about the turning point of the war, the Battle of Saratoga, and why was that important? Who started helping us after that? The French, right? Then you want to know about... Um, uh, Washington crossing the Delaware, the Battle of Trenton, crossing the icy Delaware, uh, capturing those 900 Hessian soldiers with only like two losses, but they died because, you know, they froze to death, not even really the battle. That was a big morale boost. Um, don't forget what happened at Valley Forge. Valley Forge, they were, uh, Washington was holed up in Valley Forge with about 13,000 of his soldiers. The winter was horrible. They were eating their horses, eating their shoes, bad supplies. It was a terrible winter. Uh, they did not have really nice homes or heat to live in, so they were really, really upset. They started to get trained by uh, one of the French, uh, uh, or Prussian, he was actually Prussian. Uh, his name was uh, Baron von Steuben. He came over there and started helping train these guys. Uh, it was a morale boost for them. Um, and, and they're able to, uh, move on after that, right? Terrible winter. Uh, then you want to know the, um, the, the last battle of war, the battle of Yorktown, which had all the big names there, Hamilton, Washington, Lafayette. They're able to surround Cornwallis and Yorktown and, uh, Yorktown, Virginia. And he had his back up against the ocean with the French Navy right behind him. And he surrendered some 9,000 British troops, the largest surrender of British troops on American soil. And that pretty much took care of that. While this war was going on, you had the delegates calling the Continental Congress, first and second. And actually, even before that, right, we have the Mecklenburg Resolve, written in Mecklenburg County, the first uh, countywide saying, hey, Britain, you know, to you, your laws are no longer void here. I mean, they're no longer valid here in Mecklenburg County. First call it independence of the county. Then the Halifax Resolve, even bigger, the whole colony of North Carolina, um, 
was involved. And the Halifax Resolves is saying that, you know, we're claiming our independence from Britain as the colony of North Carolina. This is said to be the basis of the Declaration of Independence. Uh, and then a Declaration of Independence, 1776, July 2nd, is written Thomas Jefferson. All these guys sign off on it, telling the King of England that the colonies are now independent from him. It doesn't make us independent. We have to fight a war for that, but a huge morale boost, huge thing for the country to get the people behind it. Uh, Thomas Paine writes Common Sense, a, a pamphlet about 49 pages long, uh, telling Americans that uh, the king is really bad. We shouldn't listen to the king. We should vote our own people in office. Uh, we should run ourselves as a government. Duh, called the Book of Duh, right? First Continental Congress meets to tell the king about our rights. We have a declaration of rights we send him. He just crumples it up and throws it in the trash. Doesn't want to have anything to do with it. Um, we, uh, we're, we're, we are telling the king our grievances. Uh, it's held in response to the Intolerable Acts and the, and the Boston Tea Party. Uh, he doesn't like it. We tell the militia to get ready uh, to start fighting. We're not going to have an army yet. That's a second Continental Congress. Uh, they met. The same group of delegates met. They create the con they create the Continental Army. They put George Washington in charge, the, the chief, uh, uh, the, the commander in chief. We have help from the French. Remember that, the Marquis de Lafayette. So that's pretty much a quick go through to refresh your memory. Hopefully you read all your notes, you refresh your memory, you went through everything, you understood everything. If you didn't ask your questions, I'm here to help you. Good luck on your test.